Leaks are one of the most damaging things that can happen to an artist's career, as it can lead to years of work being shown early to the public, leading to entire albums being scrapped and millions of dollars lost. Now in some cases, the people behind these leaks are actually close friends or producers of the artist, who steal their work to sell it off behind their back. But eventually, these traitors get caught, where they now have to face the consequences of their terrible actions, which can lead to many career-ending situations, such as being completely blackboard from the industry or even worse. But the cases I speak about in the video are interesting as it is not always as black and white as it seems to be. Sometimes these producers aren't even getting paid and the songs they produced may never release. So would they even be wrong for doing what they did? Because I used to leak the Migos music. Did you really? On purpose? Yeah. If they weren't going to use the song, I would just drop it on my SoundCloud and the blogs would pick it up or like I'd premiere. So here is rappers that caught producers selling their unreleased music. Lil Uzi Vert has a long history of beefing with leakers, with both of them being his close friends who stabbed him in the back. So many of you will have seen this video of Lil Uzi Vert having a hilarious interaction with a guy who was supposedly leaking his music back in the April of 2016. Like I should be spitting this out your frail ass. Stand up. Yeah, ass, big ass, sit down. What's wrong with you? Hacking on my shit, mother and leaking my music, man, that's my goddamn job. Goddamn fucking up relationship with goddamn other motherfuckers that I fuck with, old bitch ass. But what is the actual context behind this video? What did the guy do to him after the video? And how did Uzi even find him? So I did some digging and I actually found what the original caption on Lil Uzi Vert's post was, which said, everybody, this is a Lil Nerd hiding hacker. I found him because he sold a leaked song to somebody in my city. He said, I hacked your Instagram because you ain't answer me when I tried to contact you. Some super fan shit. I mean, thank you, but no thanks. Went through his phone, had my shit and a lot of other rappers info. This shit was crazy. Oh yeah, he ratted on the rest of y'all. I'm coming for you. Oh yeah, and he be getting these lame ass nobodies have your verses. So to break this up, Lil Uzi Vert found this dude, he was hacking him and leaking his music because he tried to sell an unreleased song to someone from his city, who then I'm guessing informed Uzi about this, so they got together and pulled up on him. Once they pulled up on the hacker, he told them, I hacked your Instagram because you ain't answer me when I tried to contact you, which is just wild and doesn't even make sense. He seemed like some crazy Uzi fan who was just obsessed with him. It also seemed like Uzi even knew the guy somehow, as in another POV of the video, Uzi said, I understand, bro, you don't understand it, though. I should be up. You know, I know, like, I know him, like, like, hit me up talking about, I know I got your shit, that's hacking your shit. But unfortunately, Uzi and his goons decided to spare him. Now the next interaction between Uzi and the leaker was actually with the infamous ex working on dying producer, Yun Forza. During his teenage years, Forza would attend high school alongside Filthy, Ugi Main, Brandon Finessen, and Lil Uzi Vert. Ugi Main and Filthy would eventually form the group Working On Dying, where they would bring in Forza and Brandon Finessen later on. Working On Dying, however, would lose contact with Uzi, as in 2015 he started to blow up, whereas none of the guys from Working On Dying had really made a name for themselves. But slowly, over the years, Forza and Working On Dying would build up their reputation, working with underground artists such as Black Cray, Lucky, Blade, and Matox, where they even managed to develop their own subgenre called Tread, in which Forza was credited as the leading pioneer of. Eventually in 2018, the group would cement themselves within the industry, as Ugi Main landed a top 10 billboard charting single with Drake's I'm Upset. This would then lead them to being reunited with Lil Uzi Vert, where they would all work very closely with him on Uzi's highly anticipated album, Eternal Take. Now in 2019, fans were constantly being edged by Uzi on the release of Eternal Take. Whether it was due to label issues or leaks, it kept getting pushed back and little did Uzi and his fans know, many of the leaks would be due to someone inside his camp. During this time, Forza was 23 and had no big placements bringing in him money, so he was broke, which meant he needed money to stay afloat, which is when he decided to sell unreleased little Uzi Vert songs to some fans to make quick money. Well, after Forza sold some songs, a fan page would actually inform Uzi of what Forza was doing, which didn't go down well. Once Uzi knew what was happening, he would expose Forza on Twitter in a post which said, Forza lucky, I ain't f***ing him up, as fella, like I know he was stealing and selling music. We should have stomped you out, but just kicked you out your sweep, sleep outside. If you don't know, this is who was leaking and selling. I know you cold as sh 
And this pretty much ended Forza's career on the spot. He was already struggling to make a living, but now that he had been caught selling unreleased music from one of the biggest rappers in the world, he was for sure going to be blackballed. Forza would then give his side of the story, explaining how he had been working with Uzi for years and didn't make a dime all while Uzi was racking in millions. He posted a story which said, lol, when you dedicate three years of working with one artist while they continue to make millions and you didn't make a single penny, then talk to me until the old fellas will never understand what that shit feels like. It's not like I was being paid and just being a greedy ass fella. I never had shit to my name. A real dirty ass fella would have probably tried to steal from a fella. I'd rather go make some money on my own than be a theft. Couldn't even pay for rent or my own fellas wasn't even gonna help me buy a new laptop when my shit broke. But you all think because I'm hanging with fellas, I'm supposed to be happy and for yo, fellas, I ain't gay. That it don't pay for nothing. I have a family and bills, you fellas is sheep. Not saying nothing else about this. By the way, I'm all for staying down till you come up, but don't starve your dogs and not expect them to bite when they're hungry. Forza would actually give us more insight into the situation recently in a comment on the YouTuber's 1111 video where he stated, For the ones who say he should have just sold beats to smaller artists or type beats, I was told not to sell beats by management. I didn't like entrepreneurship. I was told it would degrade the value of my beats and that it's better to remain exclusive. You all truly think I didn't try to make money other ways before making that horrible decision? I was told not to get a job, just wait till the album drops. It's easy to type out stuff, but until you're the one put in the situation, you will never be able to tell what you'd actually do in that position. Soon after all this went down, Working on Dying would come out with a statement about how Forza has been removed from the collective and that they will be still working with Uzi on his Eternal Take album. The Working on Dying manager Ness would also come out with a video explaining the situation. Working on dying before anybody before the internet, we already took disciplinary action against this thing. So when we found out certain things, we did our own little investigation, came to our own conclusion, and already kind of made a choice. In no way, shape, or form is working on dying support, leaking music, unreleased music. Working on dying as a collective isn't involved in shit. It was one person who was a part of our collective that decided to do some dumbass shit, and there are consequences to that. We got love and respect for Vert, so we let him handle it the best way that he felt that he wanted to handle it as well. Sorry to interrupt the video, but if you guys are enjoying so far, I'd appreciate if you could subscribe. I'm trying to get to 20k ASAP. Also, like and comment. Thank you. Let's get back into the video. After this all went down, the Uzi community were torn. Yeah, Forza is wrong for selling unreleased Uzi songs, but he kind of had no other choice. I mean, could no one help him out? He was literally hanging out with Lil Uzi Vert. But then again, this is how the industry works. Producers don't get paid until the songs are actually released. And even in those situations, some producers don't get paid till months after. Some Uzi fan pages would even try to clear his name, where they would contact him and ask him what songs he actually sold, where he explained that he only sold two songs and that the other eight were due to hackers getting into his emails. But that was just putting paper over the cracks, and Forza knew his career was truly finished, as he would come out with some heartbreaking posts on Twitter, and Eternal Take would eventually drop in the March of 2020, with many working on dying placements. But Forza was nowhere to be found. He would then go ghost for a little while, until it was announced that he actually had joined the army in 2021, to which Uzi replied laughing at him. Two years later, it seemed like Uzi had still not forgiven Forza. Yeah. We know what Forza did, but please God drop watch this, it's been almost three years sad face. Is that a Forza beat? If it is, um, no. If you didn't catch what was said, well a fan asked Uzi to release a song called Watch This, which was produced by Forza, so Uzi had to decline. However, a year later, this song would actually release, but the beat was replaced. So the song Forza originally produced had the vocals from it put onto another beat, which absolutely crushed Forza's dreams of finally getting an official Lil Uzi Vert placement, which led to him posting an angry response on his story. However, a couple years after this all went down, in the March of 2023, Forza's world would be rocked, as Uzi would perform the song, of course, at Rolling Loud Cali, which was one of the Forza produced songs that leaked back in 2019. Okay then. Okay then. Alright, alright, alright. Wow. 
What? No, he didn't. Yo, chat, what the fuck? No, he didn't. Yo, chat, I'm about to cry, bro. I'm about to cry, bro. I'm about to cry, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. And it would get even better for Forza, when the song would eventually land him his first official Lil Uzi Vert placement on Pink Tape, which was released in the June of 2023. It's not often we get to see a happy ending like this, but for many fans within the Uzi community, it was heartwarming to see someone who was basically blackballed from the industry, years later, getting his well-deserved placement. It's 2020, fans are awaiting Playboy Carti's highly anticipated Whole Lotta Red album to be announced. But as Carti kept edging them, fans got impatient and decided to take matters into their own hands. Which is when one fan would contact the producer Jetson Made, known for his iconic producer tag. Oh lord, Jetson made another one. And for producing Jack Harlow's What's Poppin', The Baby's Bop and Playboy Carti's Atmer. Two users on Instagram, you Clout and Dutzy Azrael, would take it to Instagram to expose Jetson Made in a post which read Jetson Made selling Carti songs at Jetson Made. Why are you selling Carti songs to Dutzy Azrael and me? You're the reason Hold of the Red is being delayed. And your beats are shit, by the way. And they would also attach this video of them literally negotiating with Jetson Made on FaceTime. Bro, I got fucking 17,000 in Bitcoin right now. I got it ready for you on Bitcoin. I'm talking about this song. Hang on, there's a snippet for it. It's this one. Do you have the other one? Yeah. This one. No way, Sh show me actually got it. I got the I got the money here ready for you. Bro, I'm about to pay for you got to send me out my cheese, bro. I ain't gonna count which one. Man, she got this shit the game, bro. I don't know if that's not for this shit. What? Got this shit the game. Bro, I thought you wanted money. I'm literally about what to pay. I'm, bro, I'm literally about to pay you money for songs that are never dropping, so you'd never get money from the dropping. Uh. So from that video, it is definitely Jetson made, as he clearly shows his face. I'm guessing they don't teach him no face no case, wherever he is from. Jetson and the alleged buyer were negotiating over the song Place, where the fan was offering $17,000 to Jetson made for the song. Playboy Carti's team would hear of this, and the producer Richie Souf would stay in his Discord to cut Jetson made off from Carti's camp and the album, meaning Jetson Made was most likely to be no longer producing on Playboy Carti's Whole Lotta Red, and it may have even gotten blackballed. One of Playboy Carti's sons, Ken Carson, would join in on all of this and release a series of tweets which read, Oh Lord, Jetson sold another one. Damn you, Jetson. Thanks, Jetson. We were actually done, which is Ken talking about being finished with the Whole Lotta Red album. One of Playboy Carti's OG producers, Ethereal, known for producing some of his early hits, such as Pump Fake, and Beef would also release some tweets saying, Deck to fellas who leak music. Oh, fuck, that Jetson made fella, we on your head, lame ass. Now, this got fans riled up, as usually these online communities are happy when songs are about to leak. I mean, these leakers even run these auctions called group buys, where they announce to everyone, hey, we have a Playboy Carti, Juice World, or an Uzi song here on sale for 5k, which is when everybody from that discord would send something like $5 to the leaker, and once the goal has been hit, the song gets leaked to the public. So my point is, fans don't really get upset when songs leak, but in this scenario, nothing is leaked yet. But what has happened is Hot Lotta Red has been set to be delayed, which left fans very upset, causing them to dox Jetson by leaking his phone number with the message, Tell Jetson, thanks for delaying Hot Lotta Red. However, before you guys all go roasting Jetson made in the comments and ruining his career, we need to let him clear his name. As we know, innocent until proven guilty. So let's give him a fair trial. Mr. Made Another One would post a screenshot on his Instagram story 
of text messages between him and the attempted buyer, which read, Bowed asleep, you really about to lose out on 50k easy cash, LMFAO. Where the alleged buyer previously sent a screenshot of his crypto portfolio. Jetson replied with, I don't give a fuck about that. Ain't leaking no music. Which the alleged buyer would reply with, I ain't leaking it. I want it for myself. With the caption to the story being, that vid you'll keep posting is cap. I was definitely trolling. Now Jetson would then go on Instagram live and speak on the allegations where he would show a $100,000 paycheck stating that he doesn't need to sell songs as he makes 100K in a day. I ain't shit, man. I'm in Atlanta, yeah, Georgia look, with I, right I, now. I got man. the text with this dumb ass. Right in here. Eight. Fuck, it's just I, let me show y'all something though, too. Fuck this nigga, right? Ain't gonna try down on no I'm gonna show y'all something. They done took all of his motherfucking shit. I'm gonna leak my own shit for me. Guess what I made today? This is what I made today. Why would I leak my own shit though? Give me that shit. Now, guys, if we're being real, Jetson was probably just trying to finesse this alleged buyer for his money. First of all, as I just stated, he doesn't need the money. It's 2020, he had two hit songs with the baby and just released Atme with Carti. He was bringing in more than enough to be comfortable. Second of all, if he was trying to sell it, I doubt he would show his face and be so public about it. Then finally, well, the songs the alleged buyers wanted were called Places, which Jetson wouldn't have because it's an old ass 2017 song. Then Place, which is produced by Pierre Bourne, so Jetson didn't have this song in the first place, no pun intended. These buyers would then go on Instagram Live and explain the situation. Initially, we had Jetson's phone number. We're trolling him and asking him to buy shit, not Cardi shit. We didn't bring nothing up with Cardi. And then it got silent for a minute. And then you hear his friend in the background talking about, oh, I'll sell you a Cardi song for five to 10,000. And then he starts talking about it. So we're just sitting there and then we start bringing it up. And we're like, do you have places? And we're just joking. We don't, obviously that nigga don't got places. That's a 2017 type song. So we're fucking around. We're like, you got places? He's like, I don't know what that is. So then he plays place. Then he's like, yeah, I got that. And he sounded, you could tell in the video, he sounded hella serious. Like he didn't sound like he was trolling or some shit. And even if he was trolling or he didn't have the song, he's fucked up for even like suggesting to sell a Cardi song in any type of way, knowing he got connections. I mean, the buyer has a good point. Why would Jetson made joke about selling a song when he has so many connections to these artists? It could literally ruin his whole career. After that, he just sits there and then, you know, you know who says, I got 17K in Bitcoin trying to offer. And when he's talking about the Bitcoin and shit like that, he sounded hella serious. He's like, oh, I need my cheese right now. He's asking him to send him the money and he'll send him the song. So by the end of the recording, since he has two like phones, he could kind of hear himself. So he goes quiet a bit and then he hops off the line. He's like, oh, I'll call you back. So after he hit, like he hears himself, he like hops off the live or he hops off the phone and then he's like, I'll call you back in like five minutes, bro. And then that's when Jetson had the text where he showed him the money. And he's like, oh, I'm trying to buy it off you. And then he's like, no, I'm not going to leak no music because he knew what we were going to do. He already knew we recorded the video when he heard the playback. So that's why he posted that screenshot because he heard the playback. And that's why he posted and said, oh, I'm not going to leak the, the song. So what the buyers are saying is that Jetson was actually about to sell the songs to these kids, but he heard the playback of their recording, which is when he realized they were filming the entire situation, which would get him exposed and end his career. So he pulled out of the deal and said he's not interested. Seems a bit fishy, but at the end of the day, he didn't sell anything, so he's in the clear. If I was in a situation and I saw some kids had 17K cash ready and loaded up for me, I'd probably try finesse them as well. What are they gonna do about it? Anyways, to round off the situation, Jetson Maid would come and speak on the matter with OGM, where first he explained the entire situation in clear, and that he just wanted to prevent these kids from leaking his brand new beats. So he used the idea of selling them a Carti song as a kind of distraction. It's like some weird, nerdy ass looking kid. Kind of me like, yo, Jetson, I'm like, shit, what's up? I'm like, how the fuck you got my number? He like, so he flipped the camera and he started playing my beats. But he in my Dropbox, like he got the camera flipped and he on the computer on my Dropbox. So I'm like, I'm like, all right, nigga, you hack my Dropbox. Cause so I'm like, bro, what you want? I'm like, I know y'all ain't want some money. So he like, nah, man, I'm like, he like, nah, I'm not gonna leak it. I'm not gonna leak it. I just want this song called Places or some shit. So I'm like, bro, I don't even know what the fuck you, like this nigga talking about. 
He's like, yo, he's like, yo, man, I'll I'll pay you seventeen thousand in Bitcoin or some yeah. bullshit. He said, I'm like, all right, bet. So I'm like, all right, you gonna pay me? I'm like, shit, Bitcoin's all right, worth bet. a lot now. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh shit, you gonna pay me for the song? I'm like, but you you ain't gonna leak my shit, right? Mm-hmm. Cause bro, at this point, this nigga got my Dropbox with a lot all my new beats. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm talking shit, but at the same time, I'm sweating a little bit, kind of like, man, this nigga finna leak all my beats, bro. I'm, I'm making it seem like I writ like I give a fuck about the song. So I'm like, all right, nigga, you, like, you better see my cash, bro. Like, yeah. I'm trying to keep the nigga mind really off of leaking my Dropbox mm-hmm. shit, bro. I'm like, this all my new beats. I'm like, if this nigga leak these beats, like, it's going to fuck up my placements. So, but, nigga, I'm a finesse, so it's like, the shit that you really give a fuck about, you can't act like you give a fuck about. Because then they going to, that's what they going to do. Like, that's what they going to keen in on. So I'm like, all right, bitch. I'm like, shit, I think I'm singing the song, whatever, whatever, whatever. So the nigga like, shit, the nigga's like, I guess he took that, whatever the part of that conversation was, however it went in the audio, he took that and put it in there like, oh, just trying to sell the song, whatever, whatever. So. He would then tell us how Carti and his camp reacted to the situation and how they didn't really care and how he even made up with Ken Carson straight after the situation. Yeah, like the, the, the Ken Carson nigga says shit on Twitter and shit like that, but shit, like, shit, we cleared that right up. You know what I'm yeah. Like, me and him hopped on the phone, like, bro, come on. Have you and Cardi spoke? Like, were you guys on? Ah, uh, it, it, it wasn't nothing. Okay, nigga don't even give up. Yeah, it ain't nothing. Okay, bet. That shit wasn't nothing. When an artist dies, it makes their leftover catalog turn into a fortune, as of course, they can no longer record music, making their unreleased songs into a limited resource, which will lead to labels, producers and managers delving into many shady business deals over the artist's leftover music. Well, this happened to Juice World, as Juice was slowly building up to becoming one of this generation's superstars, landing multiple number one albums and many top 10 billboard hits. Well, he would unfortunately pass in the December of 2019, and ever since then, the way his legacy has been managed was pretty poor to say the least. After he died, his fiance had sold his clothes and used his name to sell her inappropriate images. Tons of his old producers, engineers and associates have sold his unreleased music. And then his label, well, they used his death to push their new artists such as The Kid Leroy. So you can see, it is very clear how Juice's legacy has been tarnished. Now in recent times, one of Juice's closest producers and engineers, Max Lord, has been in some controversy with Juice's team. So while Juice was alive, him and Max Lord were extremely close. Where Max had worked on songs such as Robbery, Legends, Righteous and Blood On My Jeans. So there has been lots of issues with Juice and his labels in the past, but the majority of the problems began when Juice World's label were planning the release of The Party Never Ends, which is supposed to be his last album. However, the rollout of this project was awful, constant lies and delays spanning over years, which left fans disappointed and confused, which is when first Ali Lotti, Juice's ex, would come out to expose Juice's label grade A or she would first say and had their hardest to make sure I wasn't gonna be here and I pushed and kept going because of this reason only and I since my mom was they don't need they don't need us they don't need you anymore they made so many songs that were a liability being here they didn't think I was gonna make it through this year there's been plenty of times it's always been about money and Jared made enough money to not have this issue. I would literally sit on his lap every day and be like, don't go record. I'm, I cannot let Jared's legacy be what it is. Jared would never treat any of his fans like this. Which was her just reinforcing the fact that after Juice died, Grade A became a money hungry label who just wanted to profit from Juice's music after he passed. She would then go on to explain how they made her sign a non-disclosure agreement while she was not in the right state of mind, meaning she legally couldn't speak on certain things about the situation with Juice World. Well, first I'm going to take it to court because they had me sign an NDA while I was in no state of mind too, while they had brought me drugs and made sure I was high and left me alone, literally lived in my home and did not, they would walk right past my door. No one checked on me. No one made sure I was okay. Nothing. I've done this alone. 
So it is clear, Grade A is a terrible label, which would explain why the kid Leroy even left them in 2021. Three days after those videos of Ali Lotti were posted online, Pete, who was Juice's manager, would be seen with a leaker called Chase, which was really odd. Why would someone who works under a major label be seen with a notorious leaker within the Juice World community? Well, the producer Max Lord, I mentioned earlier, would come out to expose the truth, where he stated, This at Chase Master Kid is working directly with Grade A. G Money and Pete to cause distrust and chaos in the Juice World community. He is randomly speaking on things that are verbatim out of their mouths on private phone calls between us. These are things only G Money and Pete have ever said and could either relay to everyone else. They called me in the March of 2020, threatening me to give them my recording equipment, demanding I come set it up at their house and leave it there, which wasn't even very much gear at the time. I'm sure they can afford the 8k worth of my equipment, much if which I built and modded myself because I actually know what it even is. It seems that they are trying to smear my name in relation to Juicehood to get me out of their way. Max Lord would then explain how they even raided his house to take Juice's remaining jewellery and watches and even some firearms. Max Lord would then explain that he literally put his soul into Juice World's album. I recorded, mixed or produced every song on the album with the exception of Wishing Well and Stay High. I spent months in the summer of 2020 putting the album together for them, mixing, facilitating talks with producers, lawyers, mastering, preparing some sessions for Manny Marroquin and pulling two all-nighters the two nights before the album dropped, mixing new additions and making changes for them. What Little Life said about Gunna and Blood On My Jeans was the truth. The album was not mastered nor turned in and was not even a complete tracklist at the time. G Money said he didn't fuck with Gunna and that he treated Juice funny as a last ditch excuse, which is not how the relationship was in the slightest. What this Chase character posted is the equivalent of propaganda by them and defamation. So what this section is about is that Max Lord wanted Gunna on Juice World's Legends Never Die album, but the management didn't want him on the album and then they got this Chase Master Kid who has a voice in the Juice World community to spread propaganda and lies about what actually happened with the Gunner verse. The last thing Max Lord would say is, this Chase Master Kid is a pawn that they let come hang out for a couple weeks to help disrupt the Juice World fan community to ensure every time you listen to Juice World, they get paid. They want me out of their way, discredited, so they can continue to have their way. These open threats of violence against me from Cray Day, posted on Jace's Twitter, this stuff is absurd. They're openly threatening to kill me. They've stolen firearms from me. They threatened me with them. We've gone into physical alterations because Juice didn't like beats G Money tried to have him record on the day before he passed away that he would profit from. With Ali coming about these sort of things, I owe it to her and Jared to back her up here and speak out on this. I would do everything in my power to fight for Juice for his music and legacy to be what he would want and not to be trampled all over by greed and corruption. Long live Juice World. So we can see Max Lord here is like the freedom fighter that wants Juice World's legacy to not be turned into a money grabbing kind of thing by Juice World's label. And these posts were from 2022. And it's 2024 and Juice World's album, The Party Never Ends, is still yet to be released. In recent times, some information about The Party Never Ends has been released, which made the Juice World community very upset as year by year, the album seemed to become less and less authentic. Some fans were disappointed that the party never ends or supposedly just a label throwing random popular songs together and adding popular artists as features to boost streams just so they can profit. It would then come out that they scrapped Max Lord's version of the party never ends. And if you didn't know, Max Lord was supposed to be the kind of director of The Party Never Ends as he was super close to Juice while he was still alive and recorded most of his songs before he died. So it was thought that he would know best what direction to take this album in. However, it seemed like the label scrapped the idea of Max Lord having control over this album and gave it to Benny Blanco, which to many fans came across as very wrong. Now, just a couple days ago, Pete, Juice World's manager, would post on his story, Max Lord leaked Oxy and Muddy for money, SMH. Max Lord, stop leaking songs. And he would also post a screenshot on a story of an account with zero followers sending him a DM which read, he's been selling googly songs for years. It's been known, unfortunately. The first time it is when he started selling songs, only he would have, which obviously made Max look like a villain. So he responded to these allegations with a huge paragraph saying, neither of those songs are singles. I see in the dark, not Oxy in the dark. If you even listen to the words, was shortened to 50 seconds over a year ago for the intro, which was swapped out. Not the V1 bounce, that's out from 2019. Last I checked, not even on the album. 
Muddy was never on the album. It's called Kill All My Troubles by the way. Your proof is a bot account I heard was paid to send that to you. Your phone number was leaked two days ago. I received a spoofed phone call from that number for the 10th time. You haven't answered me back when I reached out. Your threads is hacked. You haven't posted in a year. You look hacked. If you're not, then why not answer me and why don't you even know what you, the music is you care about so much? This isn't even your job. When Juice was alive, you ain't spend one penny of your own. You milked Juice for everything you did off his business, touring accounts. How about you'll pay your producers what they've been owed since 2018? You'll run a scam, not a business. Keep printing merch instead of music, your real job. We finished the album almost two years ago before you'll scrapped it for Blanco to ruin it for whatever reason. Heard you'll don't want to pay him either. I tried to hit you directly, but you want to go online and spew lies and BS. I respect Bibi, I respect G Money. Pete, you a bitch. I pray you are hacked and I have to regret writing all this. With Bibi, I've spent countless hours, days, weeks, months working for the community and I'm building this album together. He cares about y'all so much. I spent months in the hospital waiting to get back to finish this. I literally flatlined on the operating table. I made sure to get back so I could work on this project with 45 plus staples zipper holding my whole torso together at the studio with Bibi. We all lost something irreplaceable when we lost Juice. I can't take that away from anybody, but some of us put our lives on the line, our health, our sanity to deliver for Lil Bro. It's sad and it's not fair to Juice or the millions of people that look to him for hope that this is the current state of affairs. I'm one of those people. Now Max basically disputed these allegations as the source of Max selling music was just a random bot account with zero followers. Max would then explain to the Jewish World community how the album is finished but they scrapped it and gave it to Benny Blanco to make a different version. To be honest, the entire situation seems like a mess, and it seems like Max Lord is one of the only people that still care about Juice and his legacy. The fans would even show appreciation to Max for his clear communication to the Juice World community, and that he's always trying to do what's best for Juice's legacy and his fans. So did he sell the songs? Well, there is no clear proof. Of course, I just showed you what Pete said, but that's nothing really confirmed. And to be fair, if he did sell the songs, can you even blame him? It seems like the fans are even grateful for him selling the songs, and the label, literally refuses to put out music. 